Good evening, Cebu. Good evening, Philippines. It's open mic night tonight. Uh, but uh, uh, today we deviate from our usual political uh, discourse and we give way to a uh, more artsy conversation uh, with uh, an American uh, who is LA based, a very talented musician, Cecil John. How you doing? Hi, Cecil John. CJ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome to Open Mic. Thank you for having me. And welcome to Cebu. Appreciate yeah. it. You are, um, you are part Filipino. Yes, half. Yes. Half. My mom's full. Your so mom I is from half, yeah. Ilocos. Ilocos. Yes. But my mom's mom and dad from Ilocos. Yeah. So your grandparents are from yeah. Ilocos. Yeah. And, but but uh, but your father. Yeah, he's from Hawaii. We're Portuguese, Puerto Rican, and Caucasian as well. So you're a citizen of the world. Yeah. <laughs> but it's your first time to to Cebu in the Philippines. Yes, first time. And you are twenty. 23. 23. You just turned 23 a few weeks ago. Yeah. You turned 23 here. Wow, I was out here, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then you're leaving tomorrow. Leaving tomorrow. Back in LA. Back to LA. So yeah. thank you for um, spending the eve of, yeah. uh, you know, your, of course. Uh, yeah. your last uh, your last day, spending your last day here with Definitely. us on Open Mic. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm, well, I'm excited to hear more about your music. He's a very talented guy. Thank you. Um, some of you may have seen him perform at uh, Subo Mercado. Yeah. Uh, was a few weeks ago? Yeah, we um, performed about three weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Not this last weekend, we ended up going to Bohol. Okay. So I didn't get to perform this last week, but the past three. So anyway, as a musician, how would you consider yourself? What genre uh, would you identify yourself? Uh, so I do R&B, soul, okay. and hip hop. It's like a combination of all of them. Yeah. But well, I love all forms of music, you know? So I'm not just like, I don't only listen to those forms of music, but I feel like I express myself best in those genres. Because he, you know, he does really good covers, but he also has original songs. Yeah. Uh, so he writes his own songs, he's just, um, and, and he plays uh, the guitar. Yep, I play, uh, I grew up playing the drums okay. and the ukulele, and then I play the guitar and the piano. You're like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I never inherited uh, any of those musicality, yeah. you know, any music. <laughs> you ever try, skill. or you just? I guess I tried you? for for a few days, yeah. <laughs> and then I I out. gave up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I like to sing though. I don't know if singing likes me. But <laughs> my friends and I we we do karaoke like once every two weeks. Yeah, but it's it's really for fun. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, always for fun. Not to perform. Although when I was in um, when I was in elementary, I did. Compete in, in okay. uh, I just well, I'm just recalling it now. Uh, it was a Lingo ng Wika singing contest. It's like a Filipino week in school. Or? Yeah, in school uh, singing contest. But of course, I was prepubescent, no. <laughs> um, and I I performed and I won. You know, I, <laughs> wow. Yeah, but you that was singing. but that was before uh, puberty. So oh, okay. I think <laughs> my voice changed and it cracked and. I never recovered. Yeah, so, that was it. but good for you. So, um, when did you start playing? Uh, uh, you said you started playing with the drums. Yeah. So I was. I grew up playing drums in the church. Um, okay. It was like a family church, and then right. uh, we had we had no drummer, so I used to How drum old for were us. You? This was in like second grade. To, oh. And you were already playing at church. Yeah. And yeah. then. And then I used to sing sing on the ukulele yeah. and play for the church. We used to do, they would give me songs and they would want me to sing and Religious stuff. songs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, after I graduated was really when I started um, going into my own song, like producing and mm -hmm. singing and stuff like that. But when do you, how did you learn to play the piano and, and, and well, the guitars? YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Self-taught. Yeah. I only play, I play by ear, so I was just like, like, like every song is that, that Oido? I... Oido? 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 Uh, no, I think that's a technique, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, only so on this YouTube. is relatively new, because... Yeah, learning... it was um, any song that I felt like I wanted to learn, I would just kind of watch on YouTube how they're playing it, how they're holding their hands. Oh my just God. Try to, just try to kind of replicate that. And that's how I you know? To, yeah. That's how you know? And you played so well. Like, I <laughs> thought you. you studied in the conservatory or No, nothing. no. I want to. I want to, but... So even the piano, you just learned from watching YouTube? Yeah. Oh, that's talent. Yeah. And just listening, I mean, just playing whatever I felt like I wanted to hear. You know, not so much like, has to be this way. It was more just... Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, my dad, I remember uh, his story was that um, his dad, my grandfather, 
He was a pilot. He was a captain of, a, of the U.S. Air Force during Jeez. World War II. So he was very strict and stern, mm -hmm. and he never, he didn't want my dad. He was that was not the priority. Uh -huh. So growing up, they felt like they were the Von Trapp kids. Okay, you know, from Sound right, of Music, because right, right. their the, their dad was the captain, and <laughs> you know, and he was very strict and always very dapper. And so my dad had to learn. It was all self-taught, oh, okay. like you, from wow. listening, listening. But of course, you didn't have YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's amazing how you would just mimic the movements. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of visually, I'm more of a visual learner. So if I can see where somebody's hands are placed, then I'll just kind of oh do the gosh. same thing. And of course you had a piano with you. Yeah, I had a piano. And how long from, from this YouTube, I mean, this really brings this YouTube uh, how to, you know, how to do things. The tutorials, man. To, to, but, but you weren't watching tutorials. Not all the time. I mean, when I was coming up with my own stuff, then I would kind of sit and just so try to put, put notes together that I thought sounded right. So you would mix tutorials and, um, whatchamacallit, uh, like, uh, like just watching people perform. Exactly. So um, I would, if I wanted to learn somebody else's song, then I would just kind of type in that song in the tutorial, learn that song, and then play that. But then when I would write my own stuff, yeah. I would just kind of sit and then try to put chords together that I felt like sounded right, All right. and just try to find <laughs> like progressions that would resolve. <clears throat> but you can't play notes. Um, no. I kind of understand now because I've sat at the piano for so long, so I know what C, so D, you can E, F, G, A, B, C, D. You can yeah. read them. Um, I can't read paper. Um, there was I took like one like one lesson. So mm -hmm. and at the end of the lesson, I kind of got a feel of what it would yeah. be like, but I never went too far with theory. So this whole uh, self teaching, how, how how long did it take for you to actually say that you can play the piano? Um, I mean, once I kind of was able to make my own production. Yeah. Yeah. Once I was able to. How long like, did it produce, take? I would say about uh. I mean, within the year of first starting, I was able to, you know, kind of come up with stuff, but I wasn't like, it wasn't amazing, you know. I was like, it was sounded generic, and as time went on, I acquired some new skills. And how long some, ago was this? Um, well, I started like producing around like 2011, mm -hmm. so about five years now. So you were like out of high school. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't instantly start playing. I was just I was more watching at that time. But then uh, over time, yeah, I started playing more. <laughs> Makes more. me want to spend more time on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You can learn anything. But you play like a pro. That's amazing. Thank you, I appreciate it. So, that. um, and then how about the guitar? You did the same thing? Guitar was the same, yeah. Guitar came a little more natural because, like, growing up, it was the ukulele, ukulele that I learned yeah. on. So singing and strumming was a lot more natural than playing the piano and singing. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but uh, as We're I was... We're going to show some videos of you uh, playing the piano, cool. okay? Oh, cool, yeah. Um, and so, and then you also produce. I also produce, yeah. That's actually what I started doing. Yeah. I started producing and then uh, as I was producing, I would, you know, sing here and there, but I didn't really want people to hear it. And then eventually in time, I realized I could find myself on some of my own songs. So you, you, you um, what do you call this? You compose, you perform, both singing and the, yeah. and the instruments, and arrange and Yeah, everything. arrange, write and I mix and master on my own stuff The too. whole thing? The whole thing, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. You, don't, you won't leave anything to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean sometimes, you know, but I, I, I'm able to do it by myself. What was, your, what was the first uh, thing you produced? Like, first thing? The first, yeah, song you ever produced. Um, Wrote and produced. It's probably not out. It's definitely not out actually, but it's, uh, it's stored someplace in the studio in just a hard drive that's sitting What's in there. What's the title? What is the title? It's probably called like Life or some, some, cl some cliche name. <laughs> some I'm cliche. not sure, I'm not sure. <laughs> Can you sing like a few lines from it? Oh, I definitely, when I first started, like I said, I was making beats. Yeah. So it was more like sitting in the studio till the sun was coming up and I'm, you know, trying to put sounds together. So I wasn't even writing at that time. Mm -hmm. It was more just literally putting oh, so sounds just together. Music. Yeah, it was just sounds. No lyrics. No lyrics, yeah. What was the first one that had lyrics? First one that had lyrics, I believe it was uh, this record that actually went into this movie, uh, Taken for Ransom, and it's mm -hmm. it was called Cinderella. Okay. And I just had written like a verse and and uh, like a hook to it, but never finished it. And then uh, something ended up happening with the record, so 
Yeah, but I don't, I don't remember exactly how the lyrics go. Okay, the first song that you actually, you know, like from beginning to end, it, it's, it has lyrics and... Um, I would say it was the first record that I actually put out, mm -hmm. the You Fly You. Okay, can we play it? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You Fly You. Mm -hmm. I realize that this one doesn't have any <laughs> lyrics. It doesn't have lyrics? But yeah, this is just the instrumental of, of that song. Well, can you sing a part of it? Um, sure, I can, I can play it and uh, sing that part. <clears throat> That's the future, right now where I am in my life with this plan. Oh, my family understands that. I'm an advocate for doing what you love with someone. You know that whole part, like, <laughs> I knew it was going to end, but it was <laughs> 15 seconds of the Okay. Song. So what was your inspiration to writing that? Um, what was the inspiration? I mean, that was the first of, like, a, a plan that we had came, came up with to release uh, 10 weeks worth of songs mm -hmm. every Monday. And uh, we called it Melic Mondays. Every Monday we would drop a new yeah, song. Yeah, we were talking about this. Yeah, yeah and, uh, yeah, it was just kind of the inspiration behind that song was just, um, it was there was real. It was whatever was coming up in the moment, honestly, mm -hmm. because I wasn't. I had no clue how I was gonna do it, but it was just kind of a, a project to like stretch myself and see. Um, okay, give myself a deadline because I'm the king of starting a bunch of stuff and just like uh, leaving not, it there. Yeah, leaving it there, <laughs> and not um, executing it. So I just kind of set a deadline for myself and multiple after that. That's so a, yeah. I had to finish it. It's a, yeah. We were talking about that when we were at Ilapoti, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's really cool how you. Not only did you set a deadline, but um, that you, you you were able to discover that within that deadline, yeah. within a time frame of like a week, every week, you can share out really good music. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and that first like 10, 10, ten Mon weeks, ten yeah. Mondays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Every Monday for ten weeks, it was just a new song. So, and sometimes like I remember the second week. It came to that, to releasing that new song, and it was like five o'clock in the morning, you and I was up? working on something, and it wasn't even done. And I was like, "What am I gonna do?" Because these people are expecting a song, and like a couple weeks before that, or like even a month before, I had finished uh, a song that I wrote in my room that I made on my laptop, and I just um, I had to drop it because they needed something. So I released this other record called "We'll Forget in Time." Okay, uh, we'll listen to that, but we have to pause for this short cool. break. Okay. Open mic, we'll be right back with CJ. We're back here in Open Mic with Cecil John. Okay, so uh, we were talking about your Monday project. Um, what's it called again? Melic Mondays. Melic Mondays. Mondays, yeah. So every Monday, uh, you for ten weeks, yeah. for ten Mondays, you would produce a song. Produce, so, right? Produce, sing right? Everything. Sing everything. Um, so the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you have like a week to prepare that. Yeah. And then release, starting Monday, and then and release Monday. the following Monday. Yeah. Okay. You have uh, one for us. Uh, yeah. From from from, uh, from your Malik Mondays. I do. So what's this? What's this one? called? This one's called storytelling. Storytelling. Yeah. We call it bitin. Yeah, bitin. <laughs> bitin. You know what it means? I don't. <laughs> short. Uh, it's, it's not just short, but uh, uh, it should be longer. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, I could have made it longer. But of course, uh, they can actually listen to your Yeah, anything. Your music, no? I have it all on uh, SoundCloud, and you just search Cecil John Music or uh, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube is it's all. What's your there. YouTube channel? Cecil John Music. Okay, yeah. so if you do if you do see Son John music on one of those platforms, you'll find my music. So Even either on my SoundCloud website. or uh, YouTube and my website, CecilJohnMusic.com. That's Cecil John Music. Okay, and then uh, anyway, you have a day job, right? Uh, you said you also work. Uh, um, so I was actually engineering mm -hmm. for uh, Sony. Uh, my my friend got signed to RCA, and mm -hmm. we just finished his album. I'm an audio engineer as well. Okay. So uh, yeah, because when I went to school. I got a certificate in audio engineering, mixing and mastering, mm -hmm. and then uh, 
that was what I was working on as my day job. Okay. Know, I was getting paid in music, so I kind of wanted to stay in the same realm. Same industry, yeah. Yeah, without the nine to five, you know. <laughs> okay, so um, your your mom is Filipino, uh, Ilocana, yeah. your grandparents, but she grew up in the U.S.? Um, she grew up, yeah, in Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, we were both raised in Hawaii. Because a lot of Ilocanos are in Hawaii. Yeah. I don't know I why noticed. they are. A lot of them. A lot of <laughs> Filipinos go to Hawaii. It's similar to here, that's why. Yeah. So I, I don't know, but why. there's like, in Honolulu, is it in Honolulu? Um, we're actually on the big island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. the big island of Hawaii. Because there are, I know that there are a lot of uh, uh, Ilocanos who live there. I don't know if it has anything to do with the Marcoses uh, having been exiled there oh, wow. after yeah. the revolution. I'm not sure about that, but... Well, maybe. Maybe. maybe, or maybe yeah. that's why they—that's why they were exiled there because there are a lot of uh, Ilocanos there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So we should find out why. Yeah, um, now I'm look. So your your mom grew up there. So did yeah. she speak uh, Ilocano or or, Fili or Tagalog? Um, I think she could a little bit when she was in the house, but um, it was, I know she understood everything that they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't so much uh, she couldn't really speak it fluently. Your grandparents are still in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, they're there now. Oh, okay. Of course they could speak Ilocano. Yeah, yeah. and Tagalog. They, and Tagalog. Whenever they didn't want my mom to understand, they would just speak in Ilo or Tagalog. Okay. Yes, but because uh, she could understand um, Ilocano, Ilocano. But, but not Tagalog? Yeah, not Tagalog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what they would talk about. Well, whenever she was in trouble or something. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then your mom, and then your, and your dad, but you have, uh, you have a stepdad, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad, my... I Carney is your stepdad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, he is. Uh, he met my mom in sixth grade. Okay. Sixth grade, and then my mom got married to him, and then that was when we went to LA, and that was the start of my like education. And you, know. you were an only child. Yeah, only child. How was it growing up in LA as an only child? You think? Well, I had, had my any? brother actually. My brother um, from my my dad, my okay. stepdad, but um, he was he's same same age as me, so it was like nice having somebody who had already been in LA mm -hmm. and we grew up together, you know. Okay. So, but oh, you grew up together. Yeah. yeah. So you when I met him in sixth grade, sixth grade. So before that, you felt like you were an only child. Yeah. Before that, I was the only child. Mm -hmm. um, I was the first of all the grandchildren too. So. Okay. Uh, well, it seems like you had a very cohesive uh, upbringing. Definitely. Uh, a lot of artists, musicians, they they try to draw from a painful experience. Yeah. Did you have anything like that? Um, I wouldn't say so much painful. You know, I mean, it was more. Uh, I feel like maybe um, my mom had me when she was 16 years old. Oh. So it was like uh, m more seeing my mom. So your mom is just in her late 30s now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very young. Very, yeah, so it was... Um, to have a young man for a son, no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and it was just uh, us two, you know, growing up, and uh, so that was, um, if there was any pain, you know, it was, uh, that was, it was more seeing my mom going through being single and having to, like, try to put a roof over our heads, you know? So that, so. that, that stuck for you? I mean, that, that um, had an impact? Maybe a little bit, yeah. Because that's like a struggle, but it's not very. I don't know if it if, if it's very emotional. Like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was kind of emotional, you know, growing up and maybe seeing her and stuff go through certain things, and then uh, my my real dad left when I was like one, so it was like not having him was I didn't really it wasn't like a something that I really it really affected me because, because I had you didn't so know what you many, were missing. Exactly, Something and like I had that. so many other people in my life, like my grandpa, who played the role of my dad, and um, other people who Which were there. Which grandpa is this? Uh, Ilocano? My mom's dad. Okay. Yeah. So it was like it's funny because like they're all so young, and um, it was just like they were like my sisters, you know. So it was like growing up, the youngest of his daughter was like my sister. Oh really? Yeah. So it was like. How old are your grandparents now? Um, like 67, 68. It's pretty young. Yeah. Pretty young to have a, a young man for a grandson. Yeah, and you're the oldest of the grandchildren. Yeah, the oldest. Yeah, so, so not so much pain to draw from. Yeah, I wouldn't say so much pain. You know, I mean, living in Hawaii is a pretty laid-back life, yeah, but it was uh, island life. <laughs> yeah, so it's I'm, I wouldn't say so much pain. So where do you draw inspiration? Where do you get it from? Um, certain experiences, you know, things that I've gone through or seen. Um, mm -hmm. It could be a movie. It could be really anything, you know. It's like whatever. Uh, it depends on the song and like whatever emotion I'm trying to capture. Whether it's like a romance moment or if it's like it could be like something that I went through or okay. you know certain. It, it all depends. 
can we play one song and then and then after that <coughs> we can talk about the process, you know, uh, Definitely. arriving at this? Yeah, yeah. That was the uh, that that was the storytelling. Okay, yeah. And that was uh, spread your wings and fly. Okay. Um, can you tell us about spread your wings and fly? Yeah, spread your wings and fly is more of a definitely more of a love song. Mm -hmm. And the hook was uh, there's as you can hear there's no words it's more melody and I wanted it to be more about uh, not necessarily it doesn't matter where you come from like if you speak a different language like the fact that you can sing that melody. Um, it kind of resonated with it. it could anybody can sing along to it, you know, okay. so there wasn't any like Yeah, that was more of a it was just more that feeling of like the melody of like when I when I see you I'm like la 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 whatever it is um, It was just like when you see a, a girl like and you know You want to like that feeling of love or whatever it was that was the melody that I used mm -hmm. and then uh, without any lyrics so people could still sing along even if yeah. you couldn't speak the language or hum to it or hum to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean for every like ten songs, how much of it is like love? Um, I would say in every ten songs, there's like it's it's there's like loving moments. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There wasn't so much uh, like directed towards like a love story, but um, yeah, it's it's it kind of all entails some type you always of always touch on yeah on yeah. that whether it's in the verse or the hook was directed yeah. towards it, but do a lot of the emotions were taken from. Do you ever like make political statements in your songs? Um, not so many, mm -hmm. not so many because I'm, uh, I haven't really been into too much politics mm -hmm. because I feel like it's a lot to uh, understand. And well, it doesn't have to be partisan, just, just that like world peace or... Yeah, definitely. You know, like, I mean, like definitely, the Beatles, for example. Yeah, yeah. I would say, yeah, I, I definitely, um, certain things that I say could uh, I would I'm more positive like whether I want somebody to you know have more of a positive attitude or certain things like that like peace mm -hmm. um, I'll definitely promote that type of stuff but yeah. not so much like talking about who's president like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. nothing preachy nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. but you started out at church so yeah yeah is there any uh, is there any of that coming out of your music um or at the very least uh, you know, some gospel sounding. Yeah, I mean, people say I sound soulful, you know, yeah. and I don't know if that comes from, you know, my upbringing, but it's, uh, I don't try to put too much, like, into the whole relig religious. Yeah, actually, um, I didn't quite uh, notice that. I, I, you know, I saw your very R&B uh -huh. stuff, but my friend, attorney Ethelbert Oano, uh -huh. who commented in, okay. in, in our photo when we were having dinner, uh, after he, we were, we were talking about your performance because he was there at the, he was there at the Subo Mercado. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he said, "Oh, that's right." He, he has this, he, he according to him, he has this very soulful, very gospel feel. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, yeah," but I didn't actually notice it when I was um, listening. Listening, uh, but yeah, it makes makes sense. And then now that you say that you started performing at church, maybe maybe. It, Somehow. Could have pulled from that, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure where it comes from, but it just whatever comes up. What's your What's your favorite song, growing up? Um, what's that uh, record uh, by Shaggy? I don't know. Shaggy, something like that. I just I remember there's a certain. Okay, Usher, Burn. Right. Remember mm -hmm. that song. Let it burn. Can you sing a little? Let it burn deep down. You know it's best for yourself. Okay. That yeah. song. I remember there was a. I don't know. I, I just remember listening to that song mm -hmm. over and over and over again. But I don't remember. Like there wasn't one particular song that I was like that that was I consider my. But favorite. did you always want to be a musician? No, I didn't. I wasn't sure that that was what I was going to be at all. So there was a time when you were young that you wanted to be something else. Um, I thought I was going to be a professional baseball player. Oh really? Yeah, I was because uh, I was, you know, practicing every single day. Were you good at doing it? that? Um, I was, you know, I, I worked hard at it, you mm -hmm. know, and I that was something that I was passionate about at the time. And so, we used to play basketball and football too, so mm -hmm. it wasn't. Uh, it was just that one kind of made sense for how tall I was gonna grow, and <laughs> so and I felt like long term I was gonna yeah. be able to do that. So you didn't have a 
going back now, you didn't have a favorite song, like one song that. Um, you grew up in the nineties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You were a child in the. Uh, you are a child of the nineties. Mm -hmm. And nineties had a, the nineties had very great music. A very distinct sound. Definitely. You know, from from Definitely. especially for the boy bands mm -hmm. and the girl bands. Yeah. The Spice Girls, they were in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, a lot of my childhood was. Uh, it was a lot more, um, I was way more adventurous, so I wasn't really in the house listening to too much music. Okay. I was uh, outside exploring with my friends, like going to cliff sides and like mm -hmm. taking our bikes and going gone for hours, you know, packing a bag with like Vienna sausage and water oh, bottles okay. and be gone for the day. And Very out outdoorsy. Exactly, so yeah. it wasn't so much, um, I wasn't listening to that much music. It was more kind of whatever was playing mm -hmm. around the house or something. Do you even listen to music before you were born? Like the 80s has, you know, the 80s has very awesome music. 70s has also oh, definitely. very good music. Now that I've, you know, decided that music is what I want to do, I love going back and listening to certain types of different artists and seeing where it all came from. But yeah. Let's talk more about that because I'm very curious about influences. Okay. Okay, but again, we have to pause for the sharp Yeah, break. yeah. Open mic, we'll be right back. Back here in Open Mic with Tito Jam. Okay, before the break, we were talking about your influences. Uh, now that you're uh, much older, uh, do, you, do you ever find yourself listening to songs before you were born? Uh, the classics, for example, yeah. or, or, or classical music, uh, Mozart, um, you know, Beethoven, yeah. or um, Sinatra, Definitely. Um, or the Beatles. I would say like D'Angelo. Have you ever heard D'Angelo? No, no. So definitely D'Angelo. Um, Michael Good. Jackson was great. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. I love the Beatles as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, Frank Sinatra. Of course. Um, I'm trying to think uh, in terms of classical music. Mm -hmm. Debussy. Okay. Yeah. I, but I listen to a lot of um, like the Beethovens too. Like I've I've just like I like to listen to them while I'm reading because it sounds like intelligent music. So I just <laughs> I listen to those. My mom used to play that when she was when she was pregnant. Oh. With me. Really? Yeah. And until I was a baby. So. When I wow. listen to all of those Mozart, Beethoven, and some resonates. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like it lulls me, not not even to sleep, but to you know, to, to a to a to a, to a specific time and place. That yeah. It's just uh, like like Fantasia, for example. Okay. For example. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So anyway. Um, but you listen. You find yourself listening to this mu uh, to to all sorts of music. Yeah, you know, yeah. all sorts of genre. But definitely. But but it doesn't influence. Does it influence you? Or um, I would say yeah. I mean, there's certain songs that I've like listened to and been like, wow, like you know, in either something that I've like tried to like whether their sound like it's it's hard for me to listen to somebody's song and be like, okay, I want to sound exactly like them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more like how do I how do I feel in that moment? Like, what are they making me feel? Like? All right, it's and the then, emotion. Yeah, exactly. It's the emotion that it, that brings that uh, that the song brings out yeah. of you. Exactly. That that and uh, try to I'll try to capture that in my uh, music. Uh, basically, that's, try that's, to that's have perfect. somebody have a moment with yeah. my song that might may resonate with them. So. I think that's a, that's a better process. Mm -hmm. That way you don't really copy anyone's exactly. style. Exactly. And I know I'm like I could be like that where it's like I could I could listen to something too many times mm -hmm. and be like okay, start to try to do too much. So I'll just uh, just try to do whatever comes up for me. So it's cool. It's cool. Anyway, um let's listen to one last song. Cool. What's this going to be? This one's uh Rest of Our Lives. The rest of Our Lives. Yeah. So bit thin again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why you really have to go to SoundCloud and YouTube, see still John music, you know, and his yeah, website, so that you can hear more from from him. Definitely. Anyway, um, so what are you doing now? What are you working on? Um, right now, I am working on a new song that okay. I'm looking to release when I get back to LA, LA that I've already written and actually performed out here. So oh really? Yeah. And when I get back, I'm gonna record it. What's and it called? Then I'll drop it. Um, right now, it's called uh, Waiting for You. Right now, mean, meaning it can still change. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it can, but uh, based on the hook, I mean, I think it, it'll stay the same. Can you sing, uh, uh, like, a few lines? Sure. Um, let's see. I can just kind of play it. Searching for the words, but now I'm done looking. 
Trying to figure out this flow, like how should it go? Just come from the heart and say how you feel. Only way it'll translate and come out is real. I've been state to state, not way overseas. I need you face to face right in front of me. Now this distance got me missing you. Baby, how I'm missing all the little things you do. <laughs> that was awesome. That's like, like a little I would want you to it. finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, wow. You wrote that when you were while you were here in Cebu. Yeah, yeah. That's the only song you've written here? Um I wrote a couple other ones and I didn't finish the full songs, but um, like parts and verses of them mm -hmm. that I had from them, but I didn't uh, complete them all. This was the first one that I was kind of, that That's I went in pretty on. pretty cool. Thank you. Look forward to, you know, when it's all polished and... Definitely, yeah. It's up on the net. Please send me the link. For sure, it's yeah, I definitely good. will. Very good. I'll make sure to get it. So, done. you're going to work on that and then what's next? Um... After that, I mean, I'm just gonna continue to be putting out songs and. Because uh, I remember, I asked, I asked uh, CJ here uh, if if he, if he believed in the reality show route, and you you don't. Yeah. <laughs> like the real world and those those shows. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't really, I didn't really see myself on those type of shows. Why I not? mean, if something came up, I'm sure there would. If the opportunity and it made sense, then yeah, I would probably you'd take prefer, it. But, you'd uh, prefer being like. An independent music definitely, person, definitely, yeah. I mean, but you say, but you're not like completely close to oh, the no, idea. Oh no, no, no. I mean, it just it has to make sense. But you're not gonna yeah. audition, like line up. Yeah, I'm not gonna go stand in, you know, two hour line for with, with a number, or a day line for with a number. Yeah, with a number and American Idol and like. <laughs> but they but they've come. I mean, the, the show has come to a, a close, right? Um, oh, American Idol. I don't know. That's I didn't I even know that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I the just voice heard it. or something like or that. Or I don't know if it's if it's confirmed or maybe it's just me wishing for it to happen because <laughs> it's been running for so yeah. so long, Definitely. too long, for far too long. But maybe they're gonna replace it with something. Um, yeah. Well, they have the voice and those type of shows now. Yeah, but the, it's very mainstream. Yeah, maybe definitely. maybe uh, like a reality show that's more across between uh, independent. Yeah. Uh, the, the See, independent if it was something that kind of related to like my my career and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, I mean it, ha it just has to make sense, you know. I'm not gonna go and do like a, a real world when it has nothing mm -hmm. that pertains to music. So I don't want to promote like um, just a different nothing that has to do with what I'm doing. Will you, for example, if there's a, an opportunity for you to perform, I mean, to perform uh, other people's songs and be, and go more mainstream, but you know, you, but you have to set aside. You're saying uh, if somebody were to write songs for me? Yeah, and, and, and in, a, in a more like more mainstream, uh, big label, you know, of course the big bucks are there. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I'm looking to do definitely more the independent route. So I would be willing to, you know, work with somebody who, you know, would write songs for me. And um, but I wouldn't necessarily. I, I want to kind of write from a place that comes, so the audience is kind of getting how I feel That's and right. the messages that I want to write. So. Um, I mean, if the deal made sense, you know, I, I mean, I'm looking to take the independent route, so it's hard for me to say that mm -hmm. I would go to label, but if it did present itself, it's kind of hard to say no to like a million dollar yeah. deal, you know what I mean, or something, if whatever it was, so. If I visit LA and for all our friends and, 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 and family in LA, uh, where can they catch you perform? Um, I've performed at USC, there's this, this like Southern little- Southern California? Yeah, USC, yeah. USC, okay. um, and there was uh, bogeys, um, I mean, if you, I can get your contact, and okay. whenever I have a show linked right. up, I'll definitely just shoot okay, you. Okay, so when I'm there, I can, you know, yeah, <laughs> I can yeah. watch you. Definitely. Um, so, so that's that. You're very set on that independent route. Yeah, for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then, but I remember you said that a dream of yours is to, to be able to write for, I mean, write songs for movies. Yeah. Like music, definitely. musical scoring. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's I would love to do that. I know that's. Um, I don't want to say where the money's at, but you definitely can make a lot more money there, and uh, and just I I would just love to oh, well, just take to visual hear your, to hear your work. You know, yeah, play. yeah, definitely, especially with the visual behind it. Yeah, so, that's right. Um, without me necessarily being in the visual, you know, I could just kind of compose. I think you'd be the type to you know to to be able to create music for for movies because, like you say, uh, I mean, how you learn music is very visual. Yeah, so definitely. I, I can completely imagine you coming up with music to match the visuals, yeah. the optics of, of a film. Definitely. That's why I definitely want to do it in the future, you know, when I can understand what 
keys are kind of evoking the emotion that I'm seeing on mm -hmm. the screen. So it's like, I just, I think that'll all take time. I, I really hope for, you know, to see you there in Thank the you. closing credits of yeah, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it now actually in uh, Taken for Ransom. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Two songs placed in there, so. Yeah, but more of, more of your name there. Yeah, I would want like an original or full maybe score. in between the credits if it's, an, it's a, if it's a Marvel movie. Yeah. I mean, Something in like between, uh, you know, the credit, uh, the, what do you call it? The credits in between uh, the main film and, and, and whatever happens that there's always that thing for sure at, at the end of the credits right <laughs> have you seen x-men um i have i have how do you find it it was amazing i mean it was it was a great film i think it was for me it's my i think my favorite of all the x-men movies. really which one the, the last one the last one apocalypse um i think i saw that i believe I it's, did. it's it's on the movies now oh it is it's, yeah if it's still in movie theaters, then I definitely haven't. Uh, so the last one you saw, the I last saw the one, one before. Yeah, the, the days of future, future past. Yeah. Well, well, this is connected, and but I think I like this better. You like it better. But is that apocalypse was like my friend Ivan Ison would say, he's in the business of doing makeovers. He's just <laughs> doing makeovers. I mean, like always a change costume for mm. for, for 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 the mutants that he uh, that he was recruiting. Uh -huh. So yeah. Anyway. Um, I would want to see you there and maybe receive an Oscar for that. Yeah, I would love. That's uh, that's definitely another goal of mine. Uh, the ones who were behind, I think Frozen, if I'm not mistaken, and they won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. This husband and wife, they're actually Filipino Americans. Really? Yeah. I don't know if it's George Lopez or I don't. Know. I'm not sure if we're related because uh, maybe we're not. <laughs> but it's a very common name. <laughs> Lopez is very common, but. But I wouldn't be surprised if um, if we are because I'm related to a lot of people <laughs> and wow. and because my family they're really we're, the Lopez's are very musical people. Really? I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> you found a passion. Like, like I said, my 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 my, fa my dad's a musician, with the exception of my grandfather who was with the with the U.S. Air Force during World War II. Practically everyone in my father's side are musical people. Wow. I mean, mus either musicians or. And my 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 great my our forebears my great great grandfather mm -hmm. they they opened the first music school in 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 this part of the Visayas. Really? It was called the Orquesta de Lopez. Did you ever go take a class or something? No, no. It was like my gosh, in the eighteen ninety oh. whatever, eighty whatever, <laughs> a long time <laughs> yeah, yeah. before any before either of us were us were born or were born. So, yeah. Um, so it's in our genes. Um, maybe I should watch yeah, YouTube. Yeah, it's never, it's never too late. You, know what I mean? like, you could definitely start doing it's, it now. Well, sometimes it's too late, but maybe I'll, I'll try your method of, yeah. of, of, you know. Just find your favorite song and learn how to play that. <laughs> start there. <laughs> gra gra graduate, graduate from uh, karaoke and, and, and actually, exactly. actually learning from YouTube. Yeah. But, but you turn this into a music show. But I didn't know that you learned it from YouTube. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Um, um, what do you call this? I know you, you, you're in a relationship. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you, you yeah. have a girlfriend and you right. miss her. Definitely. Uh, and can I but, say? But uh, it's uh, one more day, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's been can, a month. Can I say that she's the daughter of, no, can I say that? No. Um, I mean, I would, I would, you know what I mean? Okay. You could, you could, but I don't, it doesn't. <laughs> no, I think not. it's interesting for people to, to, to hear. Cause yeah. You know, uh, that, that balances things out. Definitely. Yeah, so, um, well, I was just going to say that his girlfriend's the daughter of a, of the founder of one of the bigger, uh, you know, startups. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, did you ever write a song about her missing her while you were here? Um, that last one that I was performed that I'm gonna uh, release yeah. is kind of inspired by. Yeah, by definitely, that. kind of that time away. You know what I mean? And uh, some of the lines, but I'll, I'll, when I release it, yeah, it definitely has a lot of um, inspiration pulled from that for sure. Will, you, will we see you again in Cebu? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what, when, okay. but uh, if it makes sense, yeah, I definitely would love to come back out here based on the fans I've already made. Yes. Yeah. Well, for now, we always have uh, SoundCloud, YouTube, and his website, yeah. Cecil John Music, uh, where we can listen to awesome, you know, talent uh, from this Filipino American. <laughs> uh, for now, goodbye. Thank you. Mm, good luck. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Have a safe flight. Thank you, brother. All right. See you in LA or here. Yeah. <laughs> Whichever the case may be. Exactly. All right. This has been another episode of Open Mic. Hope you enjoyed uh, listening to some music from Cecil John. Until next week, good night and Godspeed.
Thanks, brother. Let's take a photo.